Microscopes show us a miniature world that's normally invisible to our eyes. Many types of microscopes are quite expensive, but today we'll show you how you can build your own using just a laser pointer and a drop of water. And this microscope can actually see cells. To understand how this works, there's a very simple demonstration we need to show you first. A drop of water can bend light. Notice how the shape of this object changes as it moves under the droplet? When light waves reach a drop of water, they bend, spreading out. The result is that whatever is underneath the water droplet looks bigger. Modern microscopes use the same principle, but instead of a drop of water, they have a glass lens. As light passes through the lens, it is diffracted and the view is magnified. In our laser pointer microscope, we are using a laser as our light source, and a laser is very different from a flashlight or a glow stick. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Essentially what that means is that a laser is a focused beam of high energy light. White light from a lamp is made of many different wavelengths and these overlapping colors produce white light. The light from a laser pointer will always be colored because laser light has only one wavelength. It's monochromatic. Normally, light spreads out as it travels, even if it's just one color of light and all the same wavelength. But in laser light, the waves are all lined up so that they don't collide, they're coherent. It travels in a direct beam and does not spread out. That is, it doesn't spread out unless it passes through a lens. Because lasers concentrate light in such a focused beam, they can be dangerous to your eyes. Just like you should never stare directly at the sun, don't ever look directly at a laser or shine the beam in another person's eyes. This experiment should definitely be done with both adult permission and adult supervision. To set up our microscope, all we need to do is shine the laser beam through a round droplet of water. Simple, right? Well, getting this set up to work is going to take a little bit of patience. We recommend either using a syringe or a paper clip or wire that has been twisted into a loop. If using a syringe, Fill it with water and then carefully press it so that one drop is hanging from the end. Balance the syringe between two cups and then arrange the laser pointer so that the beam shines through the droplet. This can be tricky and take a little bit of time, so be patient. It will help to have a bit of Play-Doh or cloth under the laser pointer to adjust the angle. To use a paper clip, just take needle nose pliers and bend the paper clip so that it forms a loop. Then test it to be sure that it holds a drop of water. If you're using thinner wire, you can make a round loop by twisting the wire around a screwdriver and then kind of clamp it at the end to be sure that the shape holds. What type of laser pointer should you use? Pretty much any type will work, but a laser pointer with a switch that can be turned on and off is best. If you have a laser pointer with a button that needs to be pressed down, use some tape so that it can be on without you touching it. The smallest movements will cause huge effects and make it difficult to see the cells. We tested four samples. The first was distilled water. Distilled water didn't show much except for the occasional speck of dust. It was pretty clean. Water from our dog's water dish was filled with particles and several of them could swim. Did you see that? Most of the particles are drifting with the general movement of the water, but these are cells that are swimming. Pond and river water had the most microbial life including long strands of algae and plenty of swimming cells. It was so much fun to watch. And once the setup was working, we could use a pipette to add a new drop to our loop, revealing an entirely new set of aquatic creatures. The last sample we tested was saliva. The fluid in your mouth is not just water. It also has special proteins called mucins. These mucus-creating proteins protect your membranes from infection, but they also caused a really strange pattern in the laser microscope. We weren't sure if we were seeing any bacteria because of how strangely the mucus diffracted the light. We hope you build your own laser pointer microscope and explore some of the water sources around you. The results look even cooler in person than they do through our camera lens. But please remember to have adult supervision because shining lasers at someone's eyes or looking at them for too long can be dangerous. And remember to wash your hands after using water from an aquarium, pond, river, a pet's water dish, or even someone's mouth. 
a lot of the swimming cells that you find in outdoor water sources are harmless algae and plankton, but it only takes a few bad ones like amoebic dysentery or salmonella to cause you a whole lot of discomfort. We hope you have fun building your own laser microscope. It really is amazing to realize that so much life exists in just one drop of water. Work hard, grow smart, and we'll see you again soon.